So we left it off where we created our try Django folder or our try Django project, um, but we didn't actually put it into sublime text yet. So that's something we want to do in this one. And then we will actually create the super user and take a look at the admin. Um, so if we jump into opening up sublime text, um, if you click on it, it should open a new window for you, or you could just go to window, or excuse me, file, and then new file and, or new window, and it'll open this window for you. Um, so we're just going to add our product into Sublime Text 2. Now, you don't actually have to do this. You can edit the code in so many ways, but Sublime Text 2 is a very convenient way for us to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Project here, and we'll go to Save Project As. And I'm going to go into the Virtual Environment folder that I have, which is Try Django 1.9. And I'm going to call this Try Django 1.9. Notice it's in the same area as bin, include lib, as well as the other folder called tryjango19. Go ahead and hit save. And then we'll go to project again and go to add folder to project. And then we're just gonna hit open. Um, so that adds the virtual environment where our tryjango19 sublime project is. Cool. So, um, so in order for things not to get too confusing here, we don't wanna keep the virtual environment the same name as the Django project. So I'm gonna rename this to um, something a little bit more conventional, which is SRC, standing for source. So SRC is the source code for the Django project. Try Django 1.9, the, the top one is gonna be the virtual environment. And then the one inside it is the main configuration folder for the Django project. Cool, so now that we've added it into Sublime Text, let's go ahead and create our super user. Now, something you might have noticed before, if I went python manage.py run server, I've got this issue with unapplied migrations. Now, what migrations means is it has to do with our database, right? So if we make changes to our, uh, our Django project, I'll get into the specifics of what changes, but if we make changes to our Django project, we have to migrate them into the database, meaning our database and Django are not exactly connected, although they are, but they're not perfectly connected, so we have to make sure that they are and running migration, make sure that they're connected and connected the right way, or at least the way that Django has designed it to be. So we'll do python manage.py migrate. And what we see here is it's creating like, or it's running migrations, but essentially it's creating new tables in your database. So if you think of your database like an Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet at all, um, think of that, it, what it's doing. It's just creating a row for each thing and then adding some columns and just kind of doing stuff for the database. We'll take a look at this in just a second, a little bit more of it. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and create a super user. So do python manage.py, create super user. And we'll leave it blank as jmitch, as my user. Um, you don't have to put an email address, so I'm gonna leave it blank. And then our password, let's just try 123. And I'll try 123 again. Notice it did not type in the password. And this time I get this, this password is too short validation error. So this is something new with try, uh, with Django 1.9. It's only slightly different, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but it is checking our passwords. So the big deal is more for our end users and making sure that our password validation is really, really good. In this case, I gave a very, very bad password. So I'm gonna try a new one. I'm literally gonna name it the same as the project, which is try Django 1.9, try Django 1.9. And it's, it's the same as this virtual environment too. So that's the password that I used. The reason I'm telling you this password is because all of this code is gonna be on GitHub so you can actually download it and use the same database that I'm using. Now, something important to note here is where did this database come from? And db.sqlite3, this is a new file that you probably didn't notice before, but it was created for us. Django made a SQLite3 database for us, which if you click on it, it looks like a bunch of numbers. I mean, that's essentially what it is, but um, we don't have to worry about the database itself, but we do know that if I jump into settings.py inside of the try Django configuration folder, I can actually scroll down to this database se section and it shows me that I have SQLite 3 as my database and it actually creates this one for us. So this is done by default for us. It's really, really good for testing purposes um, long term, you'd want a, a more robust database like a MySQL or a PostgreSQL uh, database. You could use either one of those. And uh, Django does have support for those databases as well as other databases too. Um, but basically, by default, we have a database that we can work with. So we can actually start working and storing some data. 
So I did mention that we would talk about how these things are, or at least take a look at it. So if I ran the server again, I'll do python manage.py run server. I want to actually look at the Django administration. Um, so we can jump into the Django administration by just doing slash admin. And this is here, we can log in here. So I'm going to use my username that I just created for my super user and then try Django all lowercase login. And there we go. So this is the Django admin. This is an app that is created by Django. So if we look at our settings file again, we see inside of installed apps, the admin is actually there. Well, so is auth and so is a few other things, right? So auth and admin, auth as in authentication, as in users, and then admin as in this right here. So if I click on users, I can actually add a new user here. So let's add a user of ABC. I'm gonna have to give it a better password than one, two, three, right? I can't just do one, two, three. If I hit save and continue, it gives me this error. Password must be longer, right? So I'm just gonna do ABC, ABC, one, two, three, ABC, ABC, one, two, three. Save that. There we go. We now have this user. This is a brand new user, and this user is in the database. So what we see here when we did this stuff, it was actually creating things for our user and 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 associating it inside of the database. Very, very cool. We're gonna do a lot more stuff with migration and apps very soon. So don't worry about um, if you don't fully understand it yet, but um, we, we definitely will come back to it. There's several other things that I do wanna mention about the settings file that we'll go through more as we go forward. One of them is this root URL conf. So the urls.py, this is how I knew where the admin was. If I change this to, let's say abc slash admin and saved it, and went back in here and refresh, it's gonna say, whoa, can't find this page. But if I add ABC in front of it, I now can find it. So we'll use this more too, but that's how our URLs are designed is by using URL patterns. So we'll definitely talk about that a little bit. Um, the other files though, you're not really gonna to have to worry about a whole lot because they are made for Django and they do a lot of things for Django as well as Python, um, but we don't have to edit them very much. Like the WSGI, don't have to edit it. It basically just allows our project to be an application, a deployable application. Um, Manage.py, we do use it a lot, but we don't ever edit it. So if you wanna see the commands for manage.py, you just type out Python manage.py, and it'll show you all the different commands. We've already done a few of them, such as migrate, and run server, and uh, create super user, right? We've already done some, cool. Um, so the last thing that I do want to mention here is this installed apps settings once again. Now, if we look at Django admin, we see that it's under installed apps. So that means that this is an app that was created from Django or the Django developers. So us as a staff member of this site could go through and make changes to it. That also means that these are developers that have a lot of experience building apps. So it's, it's a really good time to actually model how we build our app after. It's a really good placeholder for that. So we can do a lot of testing inside of this, but we can also do um, like a lot of the things that they do to and emulate it on our own site so we can just make things that much better. So the next one will actually get our blog started. That's the application we're going to be building because it's a very fundamental application, but something that can be used in a lot of projects. So if you do have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.